All right, welcome back. So today we're gonna to be adding hearts. So as you can see right now, my player is missing a heart. If I go over it, there we go. So let's uh, dive right in. All right, so let's get started here. First thing I wanna do is again, go to this, uh, the art that we have. And inside the objects, uh, I want to take a look at a few specific objects here. The one I want to focus on are these heart objects. And again, when I used auto uh, slice, this sliced it not correctly. So these should be 16 pixels wide by 16 pixels tall. So I'm going to adjust it so that, let's see, it's 13 wide, 14, 15, 16. And then this needs to be 16 pixels tall. Right now it's 11. So I'll go down to 13, 14, 15, 16. There we go. And I'm going to adjust this other side in the same way. So this needs to go up to there. And again, you can see it's really faint white lines where the other box is so that you can tell when you're doing it right. And this one sliced with a bit of a coin on it. So fix that gonna make the coins a little weird when we get to them, but that'll be okay. All right, so there we go, 16 by 16, and then this one is also gonna be 16 by 16. Now there's an animation that comes with this, which is why we're cutting all these frames out. Uh, and that animation, one more, there we go. So 16, 16, 16, 16, cool. That animation is um, what we're gonna be using as just like the default for it. And again, if we just pull all them out at once, that animation will automatically be generated. So we've got 41, 42, 43, and 44. I'm gonna apply my changes and I'll get out of my sprite sheet here. And I wanna do, so 41 it started with or 42? Okay. 41, 42, 43, 44. I'm just gonna grab those four, pull them right into the world, and it's gonna ask me what I wanna call my animation. So I'm gonna go to the animations, I'm gonna go to objects, and I'm gonna call this, this isn't heart piece, the heart piece is the, the other sprite, I'm gonna call this um, just heart idle. Okay, and I wanna put this sorting layer on three, so it's gonna be above everything. And that's a little bit fast. So if I wanna slow it down, I'm gonna grab all four of those like that. And you can see these little blue tabs. I'm going to expand it just a little bit. You can also, that isn't what I wanted. I want all of them to expand. Oh, there we go, because it's trying to do it proportionally. That's not too bad. Um, it needs to go just a little bit more, so I'm going to grab the last key, uh, Command-C to copy, and I'm going to go here and Command-V to paste. That looks way better. All right, cool. So there's my heart object. Now I'm going to call it Heart here, and now I'm going to make a prefab out of it. Actually, actually, before I make it a prefab, I'm going to add a couple things to it first. So, first component I'm going to add to it is a box collider 2D. And I want to resize this so it's not quite the full size of the sprite. I want it to be about there, 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 and there. And I want this to be a trigger, so it's not gonna be something that um, impedes any kind of movement or anything like that. All right, I can stop that. Now, I'm gonna to go to my scripts folder, and I'm gonna to go to my objects. And I already have all these interactable things, and the base interactable class, just to remind you guys what it does, it knows if the player's in range, um, it knows to raise a flag, and 
this isn't quite what we want because we don't want to necessarily be raising a flag every time we collect a heart. Um, so we're going to use something similar to this base interactable class, but we're going to make a new one. And I'm going to call this a power up class. How about so C sharp power up. And then I'm going to make another script right away that I'm going to call heart. And heart is going to uh, inherit from power up. So I'm going to open these two scripts. There's power up. Maybe. All right. Unity is freaking out on me a little bit here. And there's heart. All right. So heart is going to inherit from power up. And power up is going to need a few different things. So for different power ups, um, I was only planning on doing hearts and coins, and then maybe like a heart container. Um, so coins would be essentially the same thing as rupees, but they'd all inherit from power up. So we're going to be using our signal system here in order to do something whenever we uh, whenever we collect it. So if it's a heart, we're going to send a signal to the health to increase the health. The health. If it's a coin, we're going to send a signal to some object in the scene that's managing the coins to tell it to increase the coins. And if it's a heart container, we're going to increase our, our actual hit points so that we can add another heart to the containers. So to do that, I'm going to make a reference to a signal. So I'm going to call public. Did I not call it signal? What did I call it then? Or is Visual Studio just being a pain? Um, yeah, I called it signal. Visual Studio must just need to be restarted then. Uh, hold on, and I'll be right back in a second. OK, uh, there. welcome back. There we go. So again, in the power up class here, I want to create a public signal. And I want to call this, um, we'll call it power up signal, because it's going to be a different signal for each type of power up. OK, so now that I know what the signal is, I'm going to go into my heart class that I created here. And we're going to uh, make a on trigger enter 2D method. So I'm going to do public void on trigger enter 2D. Make sure you use the 2D version of it. If you do on trigger enter, you're going to get an error. And I want to call this collider 2D other. You want to check to make sure it's the player. So if other dot compare tag player uh, and not the trigger version, so not uh, tr other dot is trigger. So if it's the player and if it's not the trigger, then uh, what I want to do for the heart is I want to raise the signal, but I also want to uh, increase the player's health. So I'm going to add a reference here to the float value that we're using to hold the player's health. So this is going to be a public float value player health. And I'm also going to do a public float. And I'll call this amount to increase. And that's how much we're going to increase the player's health by. So then uh, if something enters the trigger area, it's the player and it's not the trigger, then we're going to say um, player health dot initial value plus equals amount to increase. So however much we want to increase it by. And then we're going to raise that power up signal. So power up signal dot raise. And that signal is there specifically to tell the um, the UI that it needs to check to see how many hearts should be displayed. So I'm going to save this. We're going to go back to Unity here. I'm going to grab the heart. And I want to go to my scripts, uh, objects. As soon as Unity is done compiling, it tells me if I made a syntax error. 
Oh, there's a tile to unity thing, but that's not a big deal. So I'm going to go back to my heart here. I'm going to pull my heart script on. There we go. Um, it needs to know the signal, so I'm going to go to my signals. And I'm going to give it the health signal, which exists to tell the UI to update itself. It needs to know the player health. So I'm going to give it the player health, and the amount to increase, I'm going to say, is 2, which is one full heart container. Um, all right, so let's try this out and see what I broke. Uh, let's hit play. And all right, so let's get hit a couple times. Mirror, mirror. Get out of here. All right. All right, fine, I'll, I'll fight you. There we go. All right, so now. <laughs> okay, cool. So what's up with that? Uh, let's take a look here. So the player, yep, player's tagged just like they're supposed to be. Um, pull the void on trigger, enter if it's player. Power up signal dot raise. I wonder, was my player health changing? Holy cow, yes it was. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna set my initial value to six, like it's supposed to be. And then um, I'm gonna put a little condition in here. So there's an uh, mount that's the max, and I forget how I made that. So we got our health signal, we got our heart containers. Oh, okay. So. I want to make a reference to the heart containers here too, so that I'm not increasing my health more than it should be. So public float value heart containers. Um, so this is how many heart containers the player should have. Currently, uh, the player has three. So I want to make sure that I'm not going to increase it above what it's supposed to be. So I'm going to take the player health, I'm going to increase it, and then I'm going to say if player health dot initial value is greater than, um, if it's greater than, I have some, I have some kittens that are, that are causing a ruckus right now, heart containers times two. So if player health is greater than heart containers times two, Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, so let's make that 2F. Cannot be float value and float. Oh, heart containers dot initial value. There we go. Uh, then player health dot initial value is equal to heart containers dot initial value times 2f. I'm setting it so that if, so we were increasing the health, and then if the health is more than it should be, we're just gonna set it to the max health. We're gonna raise the signal, and then we're gonna destroy the object. So destroy this dot game object. All right, I'm gonna save that. Um, hopefully that does what it's supposed to this time. So I wanna look at the player health here. And first I wanna make sure that the heart gets destroyed when I walk over it. So, nope, no reference. Oh, I didn't tell it what the heart containers are. <laughs> uh, all right, heart containers, there we go. Let's hit play. The good news is once this is done, the coin is actually way easier. All right, so here we go. And then the player health didn't go above six, so that's good. Now, let's make sure it's gonna work when we actually take damage this time. So let's hit play. Let's go take some damage from our little log fellers over here. Meow, meow, meow. There we go. Now. Moment of truth. All right, so that didn't update like it was supposed to. Let's figure out why. Oh, that's why. 
Okay, so here we are again. So the reason that it wasn't working is because I was changing the initial value and the heart manager checks. Doo -doo -doo. No. Oh yeah, it checks the runtime value. There we go. So uh, what I need to do here is change in the heart script. I need to change these from initial value to runtime value and runtime value. And uh, that time I didn't cut. I just fast forwarded through me looking at the script and scratching my head and wondering why and yelling at rambunctious kittens. <laughs> so, all right, so let's try this out. Let's hit play, maybe. All right, so damage, damage, damage. All right, nope, still not. Okay, so I forgot to change this one too. So this should be player health dot runtime value. So just to run through exactly what's going on here. In the heart script, we've got on trigger enter 2D, we're checking if it's the player and if it's not the trigger one, so the physics collider on the player. Um, we're gonna increase the player's health. We're gonna check to see if the player health is um, greater than what it's supposed to be. And if it is, we're just gonna set it to be what it's supposed to be. And then we're raising the health signal and destroying the power up. Now, the last thing to do here is to make sure that this is in the prefabs. So in the prefab folder, I'm gonna grab my heart and I'm just gonna put it in with the objects. And then I can just get it away from my scene, delete. Now, the next thing to do would be to make sure that either pots or enemies will drop hearts when you kill them. And we'll cover that uh, very, very soon. Let's do the coin first though. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the description down below. Uh, there's a really special message afterwards, so I hope you guys have yourselves a wonderful day. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving a like, subscribing to the channel, or telling a friend who might be interested. Also, please consider following me on Patreon. For as little as a dollar a month, you can earn access to tangible rewards, like early access to videos, backer-only videos and series, polls for future topics, streams, and even individual tutoring sessions. You can find a link to that in the description. And as always, have yourselves a wonderful day.